the fourth Sunday of Easter. Today is sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday. Jesus is called the gate of the sheep in today's gospel. The risen Christ opens the way to abundant life. He anoints our heads with oil and guides us beside the still waters of our baptism. Each Sunday, he spreads a feast before us amid the world's violence and war. We go forth to be signs of the resurrection and extend God's tender care to all creation. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional territory of the Attawandaran Neutral, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee peoples. St. Paul's and my home, and quite possibly yours, are situated on the Haldeman Tract, land promised to six nations, which includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. And I know this goes without saying, but please do watch out for one another. I'm checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message, and I'll arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. Thanksgiving for Baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valley of the shadow of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk with faith and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The children's time. I'm so very glad you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Today's first Bible reading describes Christians in the early church. That's the time just after Jesus died and came back to life again. The Bible says that those early Christians would sell their property and possessions 
and give the money to whoever who needed it. They would sell their stuff so that they would have money to give to the poor. I think that's pretty wonderful. Here's a video about people going hungry because the handles on their spoons are too long. But then they realize that if they cooperate and share, everyone will have enough. In that video, the people were going hungry because the handles on their spoons were just too long. But then they realized that if they cooperated and shared, everyone would have enough. The early Christians would sell their stuff so that they would have money to give to the poor. That's pretty wonderful. Maybe we can become a little more like the early Christians. And now let us pray. So move into your favorite prayer posture, whether that's hands open and ready to receive God's blessings. Perhaps it's hands folded, um, head bowed and eyes shut so that you can concentrate. Or crossing your arms across your chest, which makes the letter X the first letter in the name of Christ in Greek. And it feels like a big hug from God. Let us pray. Dear God, you teach us that when we cooperate and share, everyone has enough. Help us to learn from you. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Believer's Common Life Today's reading is a description of life in the community following Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit was poured out on God's people. The new community is sustained in worship and fellowship, shares what they have, and ensures that everyone has enough. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and common life, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our response to the first reading is the 23rd Psalm. We'll read it responsively by half verses, which honors the Hebrew poetry format. The words that I say will introduce a thought. Your response gives the same thought, but in different words or from a different perspective. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. 
your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Christ the Shepherd. Jesus uses an image familiar to the people of his day to make a point about spiritual leadership. Those who listen to Jesus are led to abundant life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Sermon, Abundant Life and Green Pastures. I learned something new this week as I did background reading about today's gospel reading and the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. I came, proclaims Jesus, that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word abundantly is various, variously translated as a better life than they ever dreamed of, or life lived to the fullest. But Lutheran pastor and professor of religion, the Reverend Dr. Richard Swanson, pointed out this week that Jesus came to bring too much life, for that's how the Greek word abundantly can be translated. So I checked in some of my resource books and sure enough, he was right. The Greek word translated abundantly means considerably more than one, what one would expect or anticipate, more than enough. So Jesus' words at the end of today's gospel reading mean, I came that they may have life and have even more than enough, too much. If you're in that wonderful situation of having more than enough, I think there are two Bible verses which could be helpful in your situation. First of all, a word of advice from Moses from the book of Deuteronomy. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you the power to get wealth. So when you have more than you need, my counsel is, first of all, to rejoice and give thanks to God. And then from the second Bible verse, counsel from St. Paul writing to the church in Corinth. 
God has the power to provide you with more than enough so that you may share. More than enough. Here again is that same Greek word for abundantly. And it means to have much more than enough, to have an overabundance. Why would Jesus have come so that we could have more than enough? It's so that we can give thanks and then share. But you know, not all of us have more than enough. And that leads into something else that I learned this week in doing background reading, this time learning about Psalm 23. When the psalm speaks about our good shepherd making us lie down in green pastures, I had always pictured lush, green-covered rolling hills where we would have more than enough. But the psalm was set in Israel. The psalm was set in the desert. Here's a video which explains what green pastures would have meant in the setting of Israel. As part of a shepherd lesson, I did want to look at one thing in the wilderness that will maybe surprise you a bit. Believe it or not, this is called wilderness, Midbar, but it's also called green pastures. Now, when you take a Westerner here the first time and you look at this, you find people say, well, I don't know that I can go there because the Psalm 23, the Lord leads me into green pastures has been pictured as belly deep alfalfa. Well, you haven't seen any belly deep alfalfa. And from biblical time to today, it's rare to see a flock in the farm country. There isn't a lot of farm country in this culture. And so farmers kept the shepherds out as much as they could. Maybe they would come in a little bit after the harvest to glean what was left, but you don't want sheep where you can farm. This is the land of the shepherd. Right on the hillside across from us, you can see those grazing trails cut there by sheep maybe as long ago as Abraham's time. They're spaced so that an animal on one path and an animal on another can reach right to the middle between them. That determines the distance so you can graze an entire hillside. And the shepherds lead their sheep across that hillside slowly grazing what's there. Now you look at it from here and you say, what's there? In fact, I remember my first impression. I woke up one morning, I was sleeping out in the wilderness, and I remember waking up watching a flock of sheep on a hillside like this, and my, re my feeling was, what are those rock-eating sheep? I mean, what do they eat? How can you call this green pastures? Well, the answer is, there's a small amount of moisture present here. They get a little bit of rain every year, not much, but a little. Second, there is humidity in the air, especially in the evening breeze, like right now, you can feel it coming from the west off the Mediterranean, there's moisture in the air. That moisture, combination of the rain and the humidity, condenses or drips along the edge of these rocks here. And if you notice, right around the rocks, almost always next to the rocks, you get little tufts of green. Get one a moment. That's what we refer to as the green pastures. So the shepherd looks for a hillside. That's exactly what she was doing. Look at that flock across from us there, just stunning. Those two shepherd girls have found a hillside that either was exposed to the wind or had that small amount of rain. And they move that flock across the hillside and it's one mouthful here, walk a step or two, another mouthful, another mouthful, another mouthful. Now that changes the green pasture image a little bit, besides the picture changing radically. Green pastures are not everything you need for the rest of your life. If you make that belly deep alfalfa, then what God is saying, if you follow me, I'm gonna plunk you down and you'll never have to move an inch the rest of your life. Just reach out and grab it. Tell me that your life with God has been like that. Worry, said one rabbi, is dealing with tomorrow's problems on today's pasture. In the desert, you learn, the shepherd will get you what you need for right now. 10 minutes from now, you trust the shepherd. Just enough.
in the desert, you learn the shepherd will get you what you need for right now. You trust the shepherd just enough. Just enough, not the more than enough in today's gospel reading. If having just enough more accurately reflects your situation, not having too much, but just having enough, if that's your situation in life, know that God has your back. Know that, as the psalmist proclaims, God will lead you beside still waters, restore your soul. God will guide you along right pathways. God will walk with you to comfort you through the valley of the shadow of death, preparing a table for you in the very midst of all that troubles you, so that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even though you have just enough to get by, God has your back. And God is calling those who have too much to share. May it be so among us. Amen. The prayers today are adapted from those prepared by Pastor Rick Price of Lunenburg Lutheran Parish in Nova Scotia. Celebrating the victory of love over death, we offer our prayers to God, saying God of resurrection and responding, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you promise to care for us. May this promise sink deep into our hearts that we may continue to learn to trust. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you promise to restore us. Open our eyes to the ways in which we are broken, that we may also see your healing. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you promise to go with us into our difficult times, into our impossible places. Open us to your presence, that we may hope. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you form us into a gathering which centers on you. Mold us more clearly into a community which has room for the world. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your care embraces the fallen, the distraught, the abandoned, the isolated, the angry, and the lost. We entrust to you those who require healing, hope, and safety, whom we name before you. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, your care-filled promise extends far beyond our current situation. Remind us, however, that it also extends into the heart of our current existence. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. We pray this in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus the Gate and Shepherd. Amen. And now we are bold to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace.
receive the commission and blessing. Go now, listening for the voice of Christ, and follow the example he left us. Devote yourselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers of the people. And may God lead you to places of rest and renewal. May Christ Jesus give you life in abundance. And may the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with gladness and generosity. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.